Hey everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of hemorrhoids. In this lesson, we're going to talk about why these signs and symptoms occur. We're also going to talk about the differences between both internal and external hemorrhoids with regards to signs and symptoms. But first, what are hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids are vascular cushions or tissues that aid in fecal continence. So here is a diagram of both internal and external hemorrhoids. Now, everyone has these vascular cushions or tissues. But the problem arises when these vascular cushions or tissues become problematic, if they become enlarged or irritated, people can experience what we call hemorrhoidal disease. So hemorrhoids are present in the anal canal and they are supported by a muscle known as the trites muscle. Now, as I mentioned before, they only cause a problem when there are signs and symptoms, if they become irritated, if they become enlarged. And it's estimated that approximately three quarters of adults will suffer from hemorrhoidal disease at some point in their lives. Now, how do we distinguish between internal and external hemorrhoids? So in this diagram I showed you before, there is something denoted the dentate line. And this is how internal and external hemorrhoids are defined by the location relative to this dentate line. If the hemorrhoids are proximal, or in this diagram above the dentate line, they are known as internal hemorrhoids. And if the hemorrhoids are distal to the dentate line, or in this diagram below the dentate line, they are known as external hemorrhoids. And from now on, when I refer to internal and external hemorrhoids, I'm referring to the signs and symptoms associated with hemorrhoidal disease or issues of the internal and external hemorrhoids. And before I get into the signs and symptoms of hemorrhoids, it's important to note that 40% of patients with hemorrhoidal disease are asymptomatic, which means that they don't experience any symptoms. So they could have had issues with their hemorrhoids in the past, but presently they don't have any symptoms. So 40% of patients will have no symptoms at all. Now let's first talk about signs and symptoms of internal hemorrhoids. So the first and the most important sign or symptom we're going to see with internal hemorrhoids is bright red blood prorectum. This is actually the most common symptom and we see it at the end of a bowel movement. So after a bowel movement, we can often see bright red blood in the toilet and on toilet paper. Another important symptom of internal hemorrhoids is a sensation of what we call rectal fullness. And this is more of a sensation of a prolapse of tissue. So if the internal hemorrhoid becomes so enlarged and it moves or changes location, a patient can sense this, they can feel a sensation of rectal fullness. And again, this is due to the prolapse of an internal hemorrhoid or multiple internal hemorrhoids. And patients often describe feeling like they're sitting on something. Some other signs and symptoms of internal hemorrhoids include mucus discharge. So this is also due to prolapse of internal hemorrhoids. So again, if that internal hemorrhoid becomes so enlarged and it changes position, so it prolapses, it can interfere with a patient's ability to have normal fecal continence so they can have some mucus discharge. The mucus may be present at the end of a bowel movement, like bright red blood, and it can be found in the toilet or toilet paper. And I alluded to this before, but another symptom of internal hemorrhoids is incontinence. And it, again, this is due to prolapse of an internal hemorrhoid. Again, this interferes with the patient's ability to have normal fecal continence. Oftentimes, the incontinence is very mild, although it can be more problematic for some patients, and it causes irritation and difficulty with hygiene and it can cause significant decreases in quality of life. So even though it's maybe mild, it can lead to issues with quality of life. Some other signs and symptoms of internal hemorrhoids include pruritus. So pruritus is a sensation of itching. This is again due to prolapse of the internal hemorrhoid or irritation and or incontinence. So if there's irritation of the hemorrhoid, if the hemorrhoid is irritated, or if there's some incontinence or mucus discharge, it can lead to irritation of the surrounding tissue, causing some sensation of itching. And we can also see issues with pain. But what I want you to take away from this is that most often internal hemorrhoids are painless, so no pain at all. And what is classically described with internal hemorrhoids is bright red blood prorectum that is painless. So bright red blood prorectum that is painless. If an individual does experience pain, it's more often caused by a thrombosed internal hemorrhoid, which means that there's a clot formed in that internal hemorrhoid that can cause pain to occur. And some other sensations that a patient may have with internal hemorrhoids includes burning and other discomfort. But again, what I want you to take away is that most often internal hemorrhoids are painless 
and we often see bright red blood parectum. Now let's talk about external hemorrhoids. So one of the first things we're going to note with regards to external hemorrhoids is a perianal mass or swelling. So here's a better diagram of internal and external hemorrhoids. So here is a prolapsing internal hemorrhoid, as I have mentioned before, and here's an external hemorrhoid. So because the external hemorrhoid is below the dentate line, we're more likely to see it. So we're more likely to see a perianal mass or swelling. So as I mentioned before, it's oftentimes a visible mass, and it looks like a firm nodule that is purple in coloration. And what can be noted is that this purple firm nodule can increase in size over time. So as the external hemorrhoid increases in size and becomes more problematic, that visible mass can appear larger and larger over time. Another important symptom of external hemorrhoids is pain. This pain with regards to external hemorrhoids is more likely to be sudden and severe, and it's more likely to occur when the external hemorrhoid has become thrombosed, so when a clot forms in that external hemorrhoid. And when there is a clot that has formed, that perianal mass, that perianal swelling or visible mass that we talked about before, is oftentimes tender to touch. So it might not have been tender to touch before, you might have been able to see it, but later on if there's a clot that forms in that hemorrhoid, it becomes tender to touch later. And the reason why external hemorrhoids are more likely to cause pain or their pain is more likely to be severe compared to internal hemorrhoids is because irritation of those external hemorrhoids can lead to activation of perianal innervations. So those perianal innervations are more closely located near the external hemorrhoids, so they're more likely to become activated and cause pain. Another sign of external hemorrhoids is bleeding. This is often from an ulcerated external hemorrhoid, so that hemorrhoid that is on the outside, that visible mass can become ulcerated and it can lead to some bleeding. And again, an ulcerated external hemorrhoid is more likely to occur if that external hemorrhoid has become thrombosed. And the difference here between bleeding in external hemorrhoids and bleeding in internal hemorrhoids is that the bleeding in external hemorrhoids is darker in coloration, so darker blood, and oftentimes you can see clots. Bleeding in external hemorrhoids is more likely to be from an ulcerated external hemorrhoid, and it's more likely to be darker in coloration with clots that are visible. Another symptom of external hemorrhoids is pruritus. So again, that sensation of itching, and this is due to surrounding irritation from the external hemorrhoid itself. Another sign we can see with external hemorrhoids that we don't see with internal hemorrhoids are external skin tags. So these external skin tags are painless, and they are often a sign of previous hemorrhoidal disease and edema. So if there had been some issue with hemorrhoidal disease in the past, and there's some swelling in that area that has now resolved, it can lead to external skin tags. But even though I mentioned that they are oftentimes a sign of previous hemorrhoidal disease, they may also be a sign of fissure disease or anal fissures. So if you want more information on fissure disease, please check out my lesson on that topic. So again, external skin tags are a sign of previous external hemorrhoidal disease, and they're painless, but they can also be a sign of fissure disease. So if you want to learn more about the pathogenesis and risk factors of hemorrhoidal disease, please check my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay updated on future lessons. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.